couple of days ago, I made a poll on YouTube asking what file format do you usually use when exporting animations from Blender? And 55% said PNG, but only 5% says they're exporting an EXR. And I just want to show you the problem with that. Okay, so here we are in Blender and we're looking at the pre-rendered shot. So here you can see the default settings in Blender. When you are making a new project file, the file format is by default set to PNG. So the problem with this that I'm going to show you is that this fire is really, really bright. But if we lower the exposure here, you can see we're lowering the entire image. But what I also did is I also exported this in EXR. Now we're going to see what the difference is between a really bright PNG render with the exposure lowered and a really bright EXR render when the exposure is low. Look at that. We have all the information. The fire is not overexposed because if you're rendering in the EXR format, it's impossible to overexpose your footage. Just think about that. You are running around in Blender with a camera that is impossible to overexpose. But if you're rendering it as a PNG sequence, you're clipping this data you're losing all this data. So in this tutorial, we are going to export a video file from Blender in the EXR format, and then we're going to import it in DaVinci Resolve without losing any of this data, and we're going to keep the filmic view transform. Okay, so I've already exported this as an EXR, but let me just show you how you would do this in Blender. So first of all, you go to the output properties, and then you scroll down to output, and you set the file format to OpenEXR. If you like, you can choose OpenEXR multi-layer, but we won't need all those extra channels. We just need a PNG replacement for now, and the regular OpenEXR is amazing. And now, before you go ahead and click render, I just want you to know that if the codec is set to zip, the files are going to be huge. But if you set the files to DWAA, which is lossy, the files are smaller than PNG. I actually did some tests and here are my results. And as you can see, the PNG format is significantly bigger than the DWAA compressed EXR sequences. So I highly recommend using this because the loss of data here is absolutely impossible to notice. It's incredible. So file format OpenEXR, codec DWAA, lossy, and let's just select our output. Fire sword. Let's go ahead and click render animation. So the reason why this render is going so fast is I'm not really rendering the simulation, I'm just re-rendering this image sequence. Uh, so that's a bit weird, but now I just figured I'll just show the exporting of the video. Okay, so it's done. Now let's open this in DaVinci Resolve. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17. I'm just going to click Untitled Project. So let me just reset my UI. First of all, make sure you're in the Media tab and then figure out where you saved your EXR sequence. I saved mine here. And here you can see you have all these images, but we want to import these as a sequence, not as still images. So click these three dots and set the Frame Display Mode to Sequence. So now you can see these as image sequences. So let's take the EXR sequence. I also have the PNG sequence. So I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to drag them into the media pool. And now let's go to the edit tab. And this is where the problem with EXR starts. We can see that there's a significant difference between the EXR render and the PNG render. Because the PNG render looks correct. It has filmic view transform enabled. It's actually burnt into the pixels. But that's the problem with the PNG. We don't want that. We want to be able to do color adjustments before the filmic is applied. Let's go ahead and drag our sequence down to the timeline. This is the EXR sequence. Take down the PNG sequence as well. In fact, I'm going to stack these on top of each other. So now I have the PNG sequence on top and the EXR sequence on the bottom. Let me just disable the PNG sequence for now. Here we have the raw EXR sequence. Look how smooth it plays. It doesn't miss a single frame. And then <laughs> look at Blender. It's, it's impossible. <laughs> And DaVinci Resolve is actually the smoothest program I've ever tried when it comes to previewing EXR. And it doesn't even fill up your entire RAM as well. It's an amazing program. So how do we make the EXR sequence look like the PNG sequence? To do this, we're going to use a lookup table or a LUT. 
So let me disable the PNG sequence. Select the EXR sequence. You can right click, go LUT, lookup table, and EXR is by far the most used format in visual effects. So go down to visual effects, and since we are linear and Blender has a gamma of 2.2, you can set it from linear to gamma 2.2. And this is going to make it look like it has the view transform set to standard. Here's the EXR sequence in Blender with the view transform set to standard. But there's a problem. It's still not the same. And that's because by default, Blender renders it with a filmic view transform, which looks like this. So how do we make this look like filmic in DaVinci Resolve as well? This is difficult. I tried to solve this for a really long time. I just, I tried everything. I tried correcting it manually. I looked in the program files, Blender Foundation, data files, color management, filmic, ah, what's this? SPI1D, can you use that? I don't know. So I struggled with this for a while. I ran out of ideas. And then I discovered all this filmic color data, you have the cube files, why not just use them as lookup tables. So that's exactly what we are going to do. We're going to download this zip file and let's going to save it to our desktop, extract. And in this folder, you can see you have all these cube files. And this readme file is a really weird explanation and I wouldn't recommend doing it that way, honestly. If you want to combine visual effects shots and CG shots and maybe some live action plates and you want to combine all your stuff on your timeline, I don't recommend using it as Mr. Subutka here suggests. Although, thank you Mr. Subutka for all these amazing files. That's amazing, thank you. So how do you lay this on top of the EXR sequence in Resolve? Let's go ahead and delete the previous LUT. So set it to lo no LUT selected. And let's go to File, Project Settings, Color Management and Open LUT folder. So this is the folder where DaVinci Resolve saves all its lookup tables and you can see these are .cube files. So we can just paste these in here and click update lists and we're good to go. So right click, new folder, let's call this filmic. Let's find the stuff we just downloaded. Let's take all these, right click, copy, and go to the filmic folder, paste. So now you go back to DaVinci Resolve and you click update lists and click save. So now you can right click and go LUT and you have this filmic folder and you have all these LUTs. But there's a problem. We need to add two of these. We can't just add one of these because there is not one of these that will just fix it. So how do you add two LUTs to one footage in DaVinci Resolve? Well, in the color tab, you can see these nodes. Let me just make sure that you can see this. Here is a node. We can add a LUT to this node and then we can add a serial node so it's first going to apply this LUT and then it's going to apply this one. So this will allow us to add two LUTs to our footage at the same time. So let's take this first one, right click, LUT, Filmic, and since we are in linear, you can set it from scene linear to base encoding. And now we have a super flat image and that's perfect because now we can add the base contrast, which is sort of like the Filmic flavor that we're all used to. So right click, LUT, and let's go Filmic, Filmic Resolve Base Contrast. Boom. It plays super smooth and it's amazing. And now you're probably thinking, well, what's the point with all this work? This is the good part. Let's have a look at the PNG sequence. Let's go into the color tab and let's just try and lower the exposure. Here we have the exact same problem as we did in Blender. But now, if we disable the PNG sequence and look at the EXR sequence instead, Make sure the first node is selected. Now you can lower the exposure and the data is all here. Look at this, look at this beautiful data. So that means that we have successfully exported our EXR sequence from Blender without losing any data, only a little bit of compression, but you won't notice. And we have all our data in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if this video is going to make you go into a EXR workflow, here is a big quality of life improvement that I can suggest with my entire heart. An open source EXR viewer. This program is amazing. It allows you to view EXR sequences just super smooth. It's much faster than opening Blender or DaVinci Resolve to just preview your EXR files. 
So let's have a look. This amazing software that we'll be using is called DJV. It's an open source tool and it's amazing, it's really good. So let me just download the EXC here. I'll be leaving the link in the description for this. I'm wondering if I can record my screen while I'm installing this software. So let's just find our EXR footage, right click, open with djv.exe. Always use this app to open EXR files. Yep. Ay, 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 look at this. Then you can press play and it plays smoothly. You can, in real time, you can select what, you can press R, G and B and just select what color you want to see. Uh, you can press H to flip it, vertical to make it upside down. And you can just do all these kinds of things. You can right click and drag and this is all saved in your RAM. So this is such a huge time saver when you just want to look at your EXR sequences. And then you have this uh, memory cache so you can increase this. Now you can see I'm using 52% of 4 gigabytes. And if you have a lot of RAM, you can just crank this up. And then what's really cool about this is if you go to image, image controls, and you, for example, go to exposure, you can go ahead and lower it and lower it. And look at that. It can read the data that is beyond the floating point. So this software is amazing. The only thing that remains now is to give this amazing software the filmic view transform. And you can do this by going image, color space. And if you go to config, click this plus sign and on our computer, let's find where Blender is saved. So program files, Blender 3.0, data files, color management, this one, config.ocio. So let's copy just the file path here and let's paste this and let's set it to config.ocio. And now let's go to image and add plus and let's set it to OpenEXR and now set the OpenEXR to Filmic. What? Can I, should I remove this? View? Oh no, never mind. Let's set the view to Filmic and the OpenEXR to linear. Yeah, perfect, of course. And then if you want to view it as standard, you click standard. Perfect. So now you can cross this out and you can press play. And we got ourselves a Filmic EXR image viewer that is just amazing. So now that we have DJV set up, you can just take any EXR file, just double click on it and just play. And this software is just amazing. And you can just right click, go back and forth. And it's going to, by default, be played with the last one, which is Filmic. So it's truly an amazing tool. So I hope this workflow helped you. It certainly helped me. It's probably saved me hours and hours of work of not having to go back and re-render stuff because you have so much more color data that you can bring with you into DaVinci Resolve and play around with the colors. Think about this, Blender is free and open source. DJV, free and open source. DaVinci Resolve, free but proprietary, but still free. And it's amazing software. This is the workflow I use every single day and I hope it works for you too. Thanks for watching. PNG is actually rendering slower from Blender than EXR, JPEG or FFmpeg video. So uh, that's just another reason to use EXR. JPEG is the smallest, the 8-bit PNG is on third and the 16-bit PNG is on fourth. And then you have the regular zip, which is 16-bit float. It's 22,000 kilobytes for one HD frame. And then you have the EXR zip codec multi-layer 69,000 kilobytes for one frame. That's insane. So the DWAA codec for the EXR format is such a fantastic PNG replacement. One could argue it's a PNG killer. Mm -hmm.